Welcome to pregame.com's How to Handicap series. This is conference tournament week, bubble teams. We're going to talk about that. It's a big topic. I'm here, Marco D'Angelo, along with Vegas Runner, uh, coming to you live from Las Vegas in the pregame.com studios. It's conference tournament week. It's, you know, to me, the most exciting week of the season. By far. Uh, most people say that actual March Madness, the big dance, is more exciting. But I love conference tournament week. It Until gets, the madness starts. Well, yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> That's how I do it every well, year. If I, you asked me the two, I like this week better. Me too. Me too. The situation being you're talking, you're, you're handicapping teams that have played one another, you know, generally for most conferences twice already. I think Some, it's easier as a handicapper for to us, isolate value. You've got situational handicapping that you don't have during the regular season, and that being that these teams have to play, you know, back to back to back. If, if they keep winning, they're going to play four games in four days. Yeah, and there's it no is. history on how they re, how they perform or, or how even you know a lot of times the coaches what their ability to adjust that quickly. Right, because game it's not plan it's not quickly. something that they do, and that's you know one thing that you know veteran coaches have, have been here before know how to you know manage a team. You know, it's not only do you win and move on, but you got to you got to manage the, the yeah yeah. It's not so just the game plan, but you got to manage the players absolutely. for the next game. Um, but what we're going to talk about and focus here is bubble teams. You hear in the final two weeks of the season. All of the guys, the you know, all, all day on ESPN, we're seeing who's is. on the bubble. Yeah. yeah, you know that bubble. You know, so I like to take them and you know hit them with the bubble. Even the players are are, are using they the know. term "we're on the bubble." You well, know? because they read, yeah. they listen, they know. I mean, you can't pick up a newspaper or turn on ESPN yeah, yeah. and not see some. So-called expert list the teams Who's on, on the, the bubble. bubble yeah. This one's in. This one's out. This one needs to win this. This one needs to win that. What does that do as far as handicapping? To me, a bubble team is the same as whenever you're talking like in football. A must win. Have, must win. An absolute situation. You're winning, and you're in. Yeah. Most people love to bet that because they figure, well, oh, this team's got to win. We're going to get a maximum effort, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, you are. But you're also going to pay maximum price. And that's the great equalizer, the point spread. That's exactly. What, that's what people forget. And sometimes these teams that are right on the cusp of the bubble and – all they've got is like all we got to do is win that first round game and we're in. You know they say we just need one yeah, more win yeah, we're in. and we're good. Those teams sometimes play too cautious. You hear the phrase yep. playing not to lose. Yeah, instead, instead of playing the win. Sure, win. sure. And when you're that combination is deadly when you've got a favorite with an inflated line because of public perception of must win, and then they're playing especially during a conference when you're playing a dog. And more times than not, if you are playing a dog, that dog's only way to get uh, uh, an invitation is by beating you and advancing to a championship game. Absolutely. So, you know, definitely when you're handicapping, which should be your handicapping style all the time, but more so in these situations, when you sit down to break down a game, you should start on the side of the dog. And until you find something really solid... To move you to the other side of the right, ledger, right. your handicapping should all be focused for reasons to take the dog. Because, you know, this is a little adage, and, it, and it, it sounds corny, but it's true. When you bet an underdog, three things can happen. Two of them are good. They either win the game outright. Cover. You win. They lose the game, but lose close, and you cover the spread. Or they get blown out. That's three things. Two of three are good. When you bet... A favorite, same three things can happen. Only one cashes. Only one cashes. Yeah. You 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 gotta you know you gotta blow the team out. Yeah, cover that. So number. you know that's the first thing. But now let's let's talk bubble teams. Um, we've already had a bubble team. Well, not a bubble team because they they had to win in their conference to get there. But you've got teams that have got marquee names, and they need to you know. They're in the big dance every year, but all of a sudden this year, they're on the outside looking in. Right, right. And the only way that they're going to get in is basically to win their you know conference tournament or at least, at least get, get to the, the championship, championship game, game and then get a little help by screwing over another team right. that deserves it. You know, you know because 
is you know you mentioned in one of our segments earlier. This is still a committee. It's not. It's an not exact the BCS science. where it's not an exact the computer science. tells you, and they don't have a choice. You right. know, this is. There's a, a group of men in a room, and they decide. You know, the fate and of all these history. Clubs. Unfortunately, sometimes is going to you know weigh into the back of it. But I just throw off six big names that really are probably not going to make the big dance this year, and one of them's already gone, but entered in. UConn. Yeah, Final Four last yeah. year. UConn every year is, you know, is uh, yeah, how a many? March Madness Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah, you, you always know, see Calhoun. 18. Yeah, yeah. They're gone. North Carolina, defending national champion. They're not even going to make the tournament unless they win the ACC. Yeah, I think they, I do. I, I believe they have to win it. I mean, if they get to the championship game, there's a chance you know, if there's not, if there's no surprises in the elsewhere, other, yeah. Right. If the teams that win the smaller conferences do win it, you right. know, uh, UCLA, <sighs> another team. Here's a team that made the Final Four. How many years? Yeah, in just a row? lately. We're not talking right. about they have the name because of John Wooden. Right. They right. have the name since Ben Howard exactly. came back and brought the, the program exactly. back to prominence. Exactly. They've been in the Final Four. They're not going to make the tournament. Indiana, this one's on the way down because Indiana hasn't been the same since right, 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 uh, right. Michigan, same way. There's a team that's not the same. You know, Fisher left, and you know, yeah, the team, yeah. Fab, you know, the Fab. But, but, but you still expect them to make you, the, the you tournament, you know. And then another team, and it's ironic they play UCLA, but Arizona's. Every year, they're you know you, you always saw Lute Olson on the sideline right, in right, Arizona. Right. They usually got upset in the, the first or second round. Well, well that's what, exactly, but that's what I'm saying. In the Pac-10 this year, who's going to make it? Cal and Washington. That's it. I think Arizona State's going to make some noise. I, it, I it, it, yeah, that, that, exactly. But I think teams like that have to make some noise in the conference tournament to get there. The only automatics, I think, right now have to be you know a team like Cal and Washington. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, when you're handicapping con, we've got like two minutes left here. Handicapping conference tournaments, the beauty is that, you know, keep going day and out. I don't know about you, but I always see it. You know, you think it about it and automatically you think, well, if it runs true to form, you're going to see number one seed versus Play number, number two. two. Seed. Yeah, yeah. In, like in like Gonzaga game. played St. Mary's, yeah. you know. That. It don't happen in the it, BCS conferences. It, it, it doesn't. It, more often than not, you know, you might get one of the one and twos, but there's always somebody that made a run in yeah. the that got I, hot for two or three games. There might have been a team, so many, and this is, this is a good scenario to look for. Look at a team that started the season out slow, and then look at their roster. If that roster, and you know, a couple of years ago with Memphis, you had the situation. It was all young players, you know, underclass. Right, right. They start the season, the rookies, plain and simple. But they play a thirty-game season. By season's end, that team's not so much of a rookie no, team no, anymore, no. and they actually start to gel. But because of their record early on. They're not a shoe in, you know. They get stronger later. The value's coming later. They're the now team, yeah. And they get hot in the tournament, make that run, get to the championship game. You always have a game that somebody that comes out of totally out of left field and just gets hot for three games and no, finds himself. I, I, in the I agree. And we have five BCS conferences, right? Six of them, excuse me. I, I'd say I'd be surprised if in one of them. I'd make the over under one that we have number one play number two in the championship game. Wrapping up this first segment, what we're telling you out of here is be careful of the marquee teams. They, you know, they're going to be overpriced. The value's not going to be there with them. Look at dogs. You know, look for spots to go against these bubble teams because the public knows they have to win. Vegas knows they have to win. And you're, Vegas you're betting knows, an adjusted price. Uh, Vegas knows which price. sides you're going to bet, and they're going to make you pay a price for it. It's the old adage, just like with stocks. You want to sell high, you want to sell high, buy low. Exactly. And do the same in buying your teams here for basketball. Great segment, bubble teams, how to handicap. We're going to have another segment. We're going to talk another topic on conference tournament handicapping. He's Vegas runner. I'm Marco D'Angelo. We'll be right back. Remember, you can listen to all of our podcasts by downloading and listening at iTunes. Just go to iTunes and search pregame.com. You'll be able to find all of our podcasts. And, of course, you can always watch all of our videos at pregame.tv.